Hi and welcome back to a new video. I was shopping on AliExpress again for obscure M.2 SSD coolers and I think I succeeded because the things I have on my table, at least a few of them, I wouldn't even dare to call them heat sinks or coolers. We will start gently though with something that actually looks like a heatsink with the Dewshark M.2 5 dual engine. And that's how the heatsink looks like. It's actually quite interesting design because just first look has quite a good amount of surface area. We have a SATA connector for current. And first I wasn't even sure if this is like an axial fan or a radial fan, but should be radial fan, right? Because yeah, a normal PC fan is an axial fan, but this one looks a bit like a turbocharger. We will test again with a crucial T700, which is in theory a Gen 5 NVMe drive, but I'm going to plug it in a Gen 4 slot. But the SSD is still very quick. And from my observation, the power consumption doesn't really change. And the actual reason is that I want to be able to look at the cooler while we are running the test. Temperature is now stable in idle after 15 minutes with 52 degrees Celsius. And we will now switch on the fan, plug it in to see if this helps even anything. On the packaging, by the way, the fan is listed with 7,000 to 8,000 RPM. And because the fan is so small and it's spinning so fast, it's not even loud, but it's like, like such a high pitched noise. Wow, that is really annoying. Again, 15 minutes later and the temperature dropped by over 10 degrees Celsius. That is a very good sign. I am now running a sequential read write for nine times. After that, a quick break, and then I will repeat this a total of three times. So it's actually 27 times tested. And then we see what kind of temperature it reaches. To get some kind of uh, comparison value, I also did the testing with the stock mainboard cooler. So just the normal aluminum plate that you have included. And you can see that in the chart with the yellow curve. So with that, the SSD reaches about 70 degrees Celsius peak but it's always having the full speed in all conditions, so that absolutely works. The Dewshark M.25 is delivering very good temperatures, and even in the third one, we can see a peak of about 60 degrees Celsius, which is perfectly fine to use. So far, this one is actually a heatsink. It works quite well. It can be loud and annoying, and it's maybe a bit tall for some applications, but it's definitely doing its job. Before we move on to the next cooler, I want you to see what actually happens if you run this T700 without any heatsink. About three minutes after launching Windows, you can see I already exceeded 70 degrees Celsius while the SSD didn't really do anything. The max read was 253 megabyte and write was like 15. After five minutes, already 76 degrees Celsius, I'm going to run three times. Actually, let's just switch it to one time sequential read write and see what happens. And you can see how the read rate drops, just throttles down all the way. So yeah, even write, and I think system is about to crash, it behaves really straight. Yeah, system crashed. Continuing with this thing from Final Cool, I'm not sure if this will cool anything doesn't seem to have any kind of surface area, but it will have RGB. RGB is definitely working. And if I spot it correctly, there's also a switch on the side. It's not even too bad. Comes with integrated controller. Not too bad at all. Not as nice as the RGB is the temperature after 15 minutes in idle. And you can see that it didn't even do anything in the background. So we have like 400 megabyte per second uh, peak read and about 256 peak megabyte per second write. So it really didn't do anything in the background and we already have 72 degrees Celsius. So we start in the test and you can see how quickly the SSD approaches 80 degrees Celsius. And also after a few seconds later, the SSD has to throttle down. We are now at 2000 megabyte per second write. So that's like a third of the speed after a few seconds, which also means that a few seconds later, the system is going to shut down. And just by looking at how short the green curve is, we already know that this failed hard. With the final cool, you practically have no cooling at all. It's just a hot box. And it didn't even take 200 seconds for the system to fully crash because the SSD is just getting way too warm. Maybe if you want to run a Gen 3 drive just for the sake of having RGB on top, but yeah, it's not gonna cool anything. It's just a visual thing, but cooling wise, no. We will continue with this. I don't even want to call this a heatsink. This kind of like foil. 
there's a lot of advertisement going on around those kind of foils right now, not only on AliExpress, but you can also find these already applied to a lot of SSDs when you buy them just from normal vendors. And they always say that it's decreasing the temperature, but I'm not quite sure how much it actually helps. On a website of GE, which is the vendor, we can find a lot of information. I'm not quite sure how useful it is, but if we take a look at the first product picture, it will tell us that this heat sink is 0.15 millimeter tall. And if you scroll down, suddenly it's 0.3 millimeter. And if you keep scrolling, then it's suddenly 0.03 millimeter. So GE is probably also not quite sure what they're actually selling here, but they are sure it is capable of reducing the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius quickly. I then proceeded to investigate this foil a little bit more close up with a microscope and for this I also ripped a tiny hole in the surface so we can also look at the structure from the side. We can definitely see something that looks like copper foil and we have some kind of adhesive on the bottom of this. And on top there is like a black layer. 500 times magnified we can see a thickness of the copper layer of 36 micrometers and about 70 micrometers on the black layer. So in total it's about 0.1 millimeter without the adhesive. So I think in total 0.15 which we could see on one of the slides actually could make sense. In the material analysis we can at least see 90% carbon in the black layer and underneath as expected copper. But even with this material analysis, we just know that there is carbon inside. We don't know if it's graphene or graphite. And that's something you cannot detect with a normal microscope like that. Even with a scanning electron microscope, it will be difficult, but my friends at Teskin will try their best because I already sent one to them. But that will be something for a follow-up video. Still, I'm asking myself, how in the world would this decrease the temperature of the SSD by 10 degrees Celsius? Let's see if we can lower the temps by 10 degrees Celsius. Not sure. In the previous test, after three minutes, we had 70 degrees Celsius. Now we have 68. Could be that it was just powered off longer now that we started like two degrees Celsius colder. I would say there is pretty much no difference. It's now 69. We will try to run again a single time read and write load with Crystal Disk Mark to see where it ends up. Started the test and you can see how rapidly the temperature increases. As expected, it didn't even hold up for a single read and write test. Because write would be expected also around 7000 megabyte per second. Oh, yeah. Here we even have the crash. Nice. So, yeah. Not sure about this heat sink. The next cooler we're looking at is the INEO M12. That's probably one of the most obscure designs I've seen so far when it comes to all those M.2 SSD coolers. And there's also one thing about the brand itself, it's called INEO USA. So if you go to the brand website, the domain is INEOUSA.com. But if you check out, the bottom of the heatsink actually says that it's made in China. And also, if you check the imprint of the website, it says it's from Taiwan. So I'm not quite sure how reliable or how trustworthy it will make your brand if you call it something USA and then it's made in China. That is the graphene copper heatsink. I just peeled off the SSD. What I find entertaining is that they claim it's like multiple times reusable which I highly doubt, especially looking at, I mean, first of all, the adhesive, it's still quite sticky, but the way it reacts, not so sure. Back to this heatsink and some questionable details. It says it's a 2.5 millimeter heat pipe. So all this, like, I don't know, wrapped around the cooler thing, spiral design should be a heat pipe from what they say. And uh, TM500, isn't that some, at least it looks like a Corsair uh, thermal paste. But as you can see, there is no paste included. It's just those pads, like more pads than you would probably ever need. But there's no paste. And if you think that they maybe argue that they put paste underneath the heat pipes, you can look through the gaps. There is no paste. SSD is mounted, but I'm still asking myself the question, if this is really a heat pipe, like a big 2.5 millimeter heat pipe, or just like a copper tube or like solid copper material, but for solid copper, it's actually too light. But looking at the surface area itself, this could work quite well. We will wait for 15 minutes and check idle temps. 
after 15 minutes in idle, we are exactly at the same point as the other heatsink in uh, passive mode, so that's not too bad at all. I started the test, temperature is obviously increasing, but where will it end? Considering that it is a passive heatsink, the iNeo M12 is actually delivering quite good temperatures. The blue line is pretty much on par with the yellow line. It starts a little bit higher because the idle temperature was higher, but overall, after the three runs, pretty much equal. The question that remains is, are those heat pipes or not? Only one way to find out. This means we cut open the heat pipes, the 2.5mm heat pipes, and check what's inside. Well, there is nothing inside. It's just... It's basically just a thick copper wire, that's it. Okay, so to summarize, this one, the M.25 from Geoshark, was actually not too bad. It looks kind of alright, it just has an annoying yeah, fan tone. The fans are tiny, spin quite fast and have a high pitched noise, which is really annoying. Apart from that, the cooling is fine. So if you're just looking for cooling, this might actually work well, not too bad at all. Then we have Final Cool. It's everything but cool because it's probably also heating your SSD. You have to keep in mind that RGB LEDs, even if it's just a small power consumption, but they also might have one, two or three watt power consumption. There's also a controller included, which is quite cool because if you have an SSD with a low power consumption, like I don't know, Gen 2 NVMe SSD, then this might actually be okay to put it on there, not for cooling purpose, but just for the sake of making it look cool. But keep in mind that it could actually even heat up your SSD because of the power consumption of the LEDs themselves. Then we have the GE um, Graphene Copper Heat Sink, has nothing to do with the heat sink. And the thing is with those stickers, you can see them quite a lot right now, also applied by the SSD manufacturer already. They don't really act as a heatsink in terms of, you know, dissipating heat, but they can spread the heat on the SSD. That definitely works to a certain degree, because you have to keep in mind if you add additional copper on there, even if it's just a small layer of copper, it will help to yeah, make the temperature more even across the SSD. So it can help in this regard, but it's definitely not going to help cooling wise. Like, one degree Celsius, maybe best case, we didn't see any improvement with this at all. That's already a marketing scam for sure. They advertise 10 degrees Celsius, easy and fast cooling. Yeah, one degree Celsius is probably the max and best you could ever imagine with that kind of solution. Then we have the iNeo USA M12. First of all, it has nothing to do with USA and this is kind of the thing that we see across the entire product. They list thermal paste, then there is no thermal paste included and also underneath there is no thermal paste anywhere. Then they also list that it's with a 2.5 millimeter heat pipe. And per definition, a heat pipe is not a solid piece of copper wire that is just like, I don't know, bent for a specific shape. Because if you look at the cooler itself, I think it looks quite neat, has a specific and unique design, I think could look quite nice in the system and it also cools not too bad. So if you have some sort of uh, airflow through it, it would definitely do its job. But marketing wise, it just doesn't do anything of what's advertised, so yeah. That's it for today's video. We will definitely have a follow-up. We will have at least one more video with obscure stuff and then we might also have uh, SEM images from Tescan about the so-called graphene heatsink. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.